I initiated these four prints on these four printers simultaneously using the all new Panda Touch from Big Tree Tech. This is more than just a touch screen. It's a mobile command interface. It enables master slave control, allowing you to mirror the actions of one printer on up to nine others. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at this device. I'll tell you what it can do, what it can't, and how it narrows the gap between the flagship X1 Carbon with all of its bells and whistles and the more affordably priced P1S. My name's Taylor, and this is YGK3D. If you find value in today's video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In addition to supporting my work and the work of many other creators, they can also support you in your projects. Whether it's PCB manufacturing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, or even 3D printing, PCBWay can augment your capabilities to open up new avenues for creation. I appreciate how I can defer to them for things that I just don't have the time, skills, or equipment for. Whether it's printing peak, molding polycarbonate, or machining aluminum, PCBWay has you covered. Consider checking them out for your next project. All right, back to the Panda Touch. I recently replaced all of my Prusa Mark III's with Bamboo P1S's. Up until that point, I had been operating four X1 Carbons with no real complaints. My primary decision to get P1S's over X1 Carbons was simply motivated by cost. I didn't find myself using the LiDAR very often on my X1Cs, and I figured all of the functionality of the X1C screen would be available on the P1S screen, just with a few more button presses and some scrolling required. But as it turns out, there are some printer controls that just aren't available on this screen. In particular, there's no way to assign filament types or colors for the AMS as there is on the X1C. And whenever there is an issue, all we're presented with is an error code, and no written explanation of what has gone wrong. For these reasons, a smartphone running the Bamboo Handy app is pretty well essential to the operation of these printers. This is where the Panda Touch comes in. This is an aftermarket screen that aims to bridge the gap in functionality between the P1S and the X1C, providing a more convenient user experience in addition to some value-added features that even the X1Cs don't have. So how does it work? Let's start with the installation. Inside the package is the screen itself, a magnetic mounting plate, a mounting bracket, four screws, a USB-A to USB-C cable, and the classic rubber ducky that comes with nearly every Big Tree Tech product. We'll attach the bracket to the mounting plate before attaching it to the printer. It's not of critical importance which printer this is attached to, because it's essentially just a charging station. All of the communication and data transfer is done wirelessly. You could even keep this on your desk or in some central location if you prefer. The screen itself is portable and has a 30 minute battery life. You simply need to toggle from printer power to battery power and you can take it with you. If you are mounting it on the printer, you'll first need to remove the AMS and the top glass in order to gain access to the inside. The supplied cable gets plugged into the 5 volt USB-A power port on the inside frame behind the stock screen. The cable is routed through some cable management clips and up through a cutout in the frame. It really feels as if the printer was designed with this upgrade in mind. The USB-C end of the cable gets plugged into the back of the charging dock. We'll peel the backing off the adhesive then stick the bracket to the frame above the existing screen. And that's the installation complete. On first power up, we'll connect the screen to a wireless network. We can then scan the network to find any local devices. This will pre-populate the IP address and serial number, but you'll need to get the access code from the printer directly by following the instructions on screen. This process looks a little bit different for the X1 and A1 series. Before doing anything else, it would be wise to update the firmware. Some of you will be glad to hear that this device isn't cloud connected whatsoever. The drawback to this is that you'll need to manually fetch the files anytime there's a new firmware update, and you won't be notified when there is one. In order to initiate the update, first identify the IP address of the screen. Type that IP address into a web browser and upload the new firmware file. With that complete, you can return to the screen and add any additional printers you wish to control. The interface of the Panda Touch will look very familiar for those of you that have an X1 Carbon. We can perform all of the basic functions of printer operation. Unlike the stock P1S screen, the Panda Touch gives you the ability to assign filament type and color for each of the AMS inputs. And when an issue occurs, we now have a full written description of what went wrong, rather than just an ambiguous error code. So now we have the convenience of the X1C screen on the P1S, without the need to use the Bamboo Handy app. But the Panda Touch has the added benefit of allowing us to control multiple printers simultaneously. Each printer can be given the status of master, slave, sync, or disconnected. Sync mode simply keeps the printer's status up to date on the screen. 
while disconnected does not. In order to actually control the printer, it needs to be either a master or a slave. The master will be the only printer for which you can access the file system and the AMS info. If you do want to access that information for another printer, you'll first need to make it the new master, which is my first major gripe with the Panda Touch. There should be a way to access that information without changing the role assignment of each printer. The slaves will mimic the master, whether that be homing, heating, fan control, toggling the chamber light, or initiating a print shop. Whatever the master is instructed to do, the slaves will do the same. And if you're wondering about that terminology and whether or not it's politically correct, well, it's been around for a long time in the computing world, and it's simply a hierarchy between two devices. Could there be a better name? Absolutely. Maybe you can let us know down in the comments what you think that could be. When sending a print job, you can opt out any of the slaves or opt in any of the sync mode printers. We have the normal preprint options for each printer, like bed leveling, time lapse, and flow calibration for the X and A series printers. Since G code varies between the P1, X1, and A1 series printers, you'll only want to use this functionality for printers of the same model. The screen will warn you of this potential conflict when initiating the print. You'll also need to make sure the same filament type is loaded in each printer. This brings me to my second major gripe with the Panda Touch. You only have the ability to have one master slave group. Ideally, you'd be able to have multiple groups, categorized by the printer model or the filament type that you have loaded. I did provide this feedback to Big Tree Tech, so hopefully we'll see this functionality added in a future update. When attempting to initiate a print job from the master's SD card, it was unsuccessful in sending the job to the slaves. I'm not sure if this is a bug or a known limitation, but fortunately we have another option. The Panda Touch has a full-size USB slot, which can be used to upload print files. When initiating a print from USB, it successfully uploaded the G-code to each of the printers. The start wasn't quite synchronized, due to the finite file upload speeds, but before long, all of the printers had initiated the preprint sequence. On the screen, we have a dashboard where we can monitor the status of each printer. If necessary, we could also stop all of the print jobs with one button press using a global kill command. In the course of printing, one of the printers had an issue. The AMS assist motor was overloaded due to a tangle in the filament spool. From the notification center on the Panda Touch, we can see the error messages generated by each printer and respond accordingly. A short while later, I had four successful prints. So that's the basic overview of how the Panda Touch works, but there are a few additional advantages to this upgrade. In addition to a full-size USB port, the screen also has an I2C port for serial communications. This can be used with a thermocouple for chamber temperature measurement or a hygrometer for humidity sensing. An additional advantage of this screen is that we will supposedly have the ability to assign custom filament profiles to the AMS inputs, though this functionality does not yet appear to be implemented. I could also see them opening up the UI to customization in the future, with the Big Tree Tech logo replaceable by your own image, similar to what is possible with the X1 Plus community firmware. So that's all well and good but there are a few major limitations you need to be aware of. There are three big benefits of the X1C screen that Panda Touch does not support. Number one, thumbnail previews. Currently, we can only see the file name and not an image of the model as on the X1C. Number two, AMS remapping at runtime. On the X1C, we can reassign the inputs when initiating the print without needing to reslice the file. This is not currently possible on the Panda Touch you would need to reslice the file or rearrange the filaments within the AMS if they are not as desired. Number three, navigation of multi-plate sliced 3MF files. On the X1C, if you have a multi-plate file on the local storage, you can swipe through to select which plate you'd like to print. This is a convenient method of organization for large projects that require multiple print jobs. On the Panda Touch, this isn't possible. You would need to slice and export the G-code for each plate individually. What these three limitations boil down to is a lack of native support for the 3MF file format. As compared to G-Code, which simply stores the instructions for the print job, 3MFs can store thumbnails, multiple G-Code files, and metadata concerning the AMS filament mapping. I've been told that thumbnail preview support will be added in a future update, so we can only hope that the other functionality will follow. As for the usage experience, if you want to make use of the master-slave functionality, you'll need to access the screen in order to start the print you won't be able to initiate it remotely from Bamboo Studio. Assuming the micro SD file issue gets resolved, you'll at least be able to upload the files remotely, 
but you'll still need to access the screen in order to start the print. Until then, you'll have the added step of using a USB key for file transfer. If you're running a print farm and printing the same things repeatedly, this shouldn't be an issue. In that case, the Panda Touch functions as a print server with a centralized file repository, which is actually an added benefit. Now let's talk about price and value. When I heard this device was coming out, I predicted it would retail for at least $99. To my surprise, the actual price is a much lower $59, which I think makes it a great value even if you're only using it to control a single printer. But if you're using it to control multiple, it's even better value. It adds some convenient quality of life and ease of use features to the already very capable P1S, bringing it more in line with the X1C at a considerably lower cost. So does that make the X1 Carbon obsolete? Well, not quite. The X1C still has a few advantages, like LiDAR flow calibration, a hardened steel nozzle and drive gears, a better camera, and a better processor. The latter of which enables the use of the X1 Plus community firmware, something the P1S cannot support. But with the addition of the Panda Touch, I certainly don't regret buying more of these and not more of these. There are still a few bugs and features that have yet to be added, but even in its current state, this upgrade is well worth the cost. So I hope that answers all of your questions about the Panda Touch. Will you be picking one of these up, or will you stick with the old-fashioned LCD? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do me a favor and hit that like button, and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.